<coughs> ah, guys, it's been a wonderful week. A wonderful one. I got strep throat. I can't talk very good. Hold on. <gasps> I need a turbocharger is what I need. Give me a big turbocharger. Funny you say that. It is funny that you say that. Or that I say that. I don't know. I'm confused. It has been a wonderful week. I have got strep throat. I cannot talk. I cannot speak. Our army truck has caught fire multiple times this week. But you oh, know. Oh, hey, we haven't thrown our lemon yet. Today we are going to be working on our Cummins Swap Mustang. There's a lot of things that need to be done to it, a lot of the small stuff that needs to be finished up on it. So, without further ado, let's go get it done. Well, life gives you lemons. How have I missed you, sweetheart? Oh, it's almost been, what, a day? Two days? I don't know. There's a lot of challenges that we need to overcome with this because obviously half the challenge was getting the engine into the car. The other half of the challenge is actually making everything work around the engine. Now let me show you the first challenge that we're running into. First challenge is I don't want to hit my head on this car. Hey, that, yeah, that, don't do that. Dom did that the other day. He's got a goose egg like right here. <laughs> I would like to show you guys the new yoke that I bought in Wichita, but I accidentally slid it on there a little bit and now I can't get it off. So let's just say it's halfway installed. Anyway, Ford actually uses a really stupid, basically one time use driveline system for Ford Mustangs. Even the Raptor has the same system on it. This here is the driveline that Ford puts underneath our Mustang. This just ain't gonna work. Look, it's all kinds of floppy and we know that that's not gonna take the power of a 12 valve Cummins. It's got this stupid joint on the end which is a one-time use driveline. Not really a smart idea, nobody really likes them. So, I would say we're just gonna expertly catalog this, but somewhere on here, scrap if dropped. So, we're not gonna drop it. Just kidding. Ain't really scrap if drop? Yeah, yeah, it's junk now. We've been running back and forth to Wichita a whole bunch to find this yoke, which fits into our Ford 8.8 .8 rear end, which will allow us to make a completely custom drive shaft coming from our transmission that is hooked. Ow. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, don't do that, that hurts. Wait, I have to say, this is very, very tough. That's not what you hit. Okay. You hit this. I made that, yeah. Yeah, you were saying how tough it was last it time. It is tough, isn't it? How's, how's it feel? Does it feel tough? It feels like it hit my head hard. We're getting a completely custom drive shaft coming from our 12 valve Cummins and our power-driven diesel transmission back to our rear end. Now. Eye measurement, everything looks great, but we're really not gonna know until we get this yoke put all the way on, and then we're gonna have to take a measurement to see how long our drive shaft needs to be, then take all that information up to our driveline shop in Wichita, which they specialize in making drive lines for Peterbelts and Kenworths, so they should definitely be able to make something that's gonna hold for at least one pass with all the power we're gonna have. Maybe two, maybe two passes. Pretty beefy. I'll give it three. Third time's a charm, we'll break it. All right, so we got all the measurements we need for the drive line. So the guys in Wichita are gonna be making us one of them. They might not get it done today, but there is some other stuff we need to get done. Namely, we need to figure out how we're gonna keep this big Cummins engine cool. And by that, I mean radiators, which I've got a really pretty one over here in a box that we need to open. We've assembled a literal mountain of parts and cardboard boxes on the back of the Duramax for the smoke sign. There is all kinds of awesome stuff in these boxes. Who knows, there could be a flux capacitor, a big turbo, twin turbos. Okay, you know what, I can't even hold myself back. Guys, there's gonna be twin turbos. Not in any of these boxes, but don't worry, them boxes will be coming shortly. I guess, so let's start opening boxes and throwing parts at this car. Yeet! First job. What the f Oh, never mind, it's right. <laughs> Birdie! Okay, let's see how it fits. All right, so basically, I took a couple measurements. This should fit in between the frame rails. Hold on. Should being the operative word here. Should is the operative word of everything we do. Everything should work. And Does it doesn't, we have a hammer. Oh, we've got multiple hammers, don't you worry about that. And I'm thinking, this fit like right in there like that. It looks a lot smaller now, but we're gonna set it up a little bit higher, like right there. I think that's gonna be good. I think that's gonna be really good. You also gotta count, we don't need that big a radiator because we're not gonna be towing a whole lot with the Cummins Swap Mustang. 
maybe just a little bit, a couple 20,000 pound loads here or there, but that's about it. We're not gonna need the biggest radiator in the world. I think that'll be good though, that'll work. Let me grab the intercooler and we'll see how it looks. You're gonna sit right there. Oh, this is almost like a professional knew how to do it. This is gonna come together really well. This is gonna be awesome. Admire. Let's let the wiring harness hold it, that way it just looks good. That's gonna be sick. Actually, to be honest, we could flip that over, bring the intercooler tube in from up here. That'd be awesome too. Actually, one more part. Hold on, let me grab something else. I got a smoke stain. Yeah! I got my horn. I actually never put this on here, so I don't know how this is gonna fit, but I saw it on Amazon and I thought it looked cool. Yep, it looks cool. Oh, look, that's gonna work really well. Bolt that right there, intercooler tube coming down, turning right in. It's almost like it was meant to be. This is gonna be epic. Oop. Stay. Good intercooler tube. Now I just need to figure out how to mount all this stuff up. All right, now that we got everything kind of mocked up and sitting there, let's go get all of the parts and the equipment we're gonna need to put this car together. Namely, I need to go get my welder and we need to go to O'Reilly's and the steel shop and get some steel to build a radiator support out of. All right. Bye, my friend. I will see you later. All right. Let's go get parts. What happened to it? He swerved. When he did, he lost control of it, shot down in the ditch, hit a culvert, went up in the air about 30 feet, went through that guy's fence. And, oh, man. I'll meet you out there. Man, I sure appreciate it. No problem. But first off, food. All right. Jerry will have to wait. Don't look that bad from here. Okay, never mind. It looks pretty bad. That thing is toasted. Jerry, what did you do? I'm thinking she'll still bring a thousand like that, don't you? Pennies? Thousand dollars! Mm. Whoa! This thing's high dollar. What's wrong with it? Who'd want to drive that thing around with got a stick of wood hanging out the front of it? Well, what do you want it for, Jerry? Thousand bucks right now. I'm here to help you. I'm not even here to buy it. Oh, well, I'm here to sell. Let's do some selling and all. Oh, okay. I guess we'll get, we'll see you later. Huh? I would just hook a chain to it. Because the deal's broke on this side. What's broke? The tie rod that goes into the uh, steering. Do you need steering? Well, you kind of do. I had to. We got to get to work. Uh, looks like you got a lot of work to do, Jerry. I'm fixing to sell it to you guys. You guys have a lot of work. Yeah, you do. No, we don't. I'll talk you into it. No. She's a gem. Oh, you might have a buyer right here with Jerry. Where? Hey. <laughs> Show it to him. Sure is a nice truck. Stop lying to that camera. <laughs> One owner of many. Midnight blue. In the cab. All tires. Well, you have to lift up on her to get her to shack. But other than that, she's a good, good transfer case, thousand dollars! Tranny, good motor, you got it all right here. The, Woo! Yep. And it still runs, believe it or not. Jerry, this isn't helping your commercial. Oh, it runs great. <laughs> it looks like it, Jerry. Don't like that. You're not lined up at all, Jerry. Jerry, stop. Nope. I'll back up a little bit, actually. Hey, Jerry, I thought you said it run good. Well, I'm sure there's, that thing's into the fuel line or something. <laughs> that's that's what it is, I bet. It had to be running good to wreck. Here, let me, let me give it a shot, Jerry. Jerry, I was going to say something nice about it, but I can't think of nothing nice to say. You want to know why your perfect truck don't run very good? Why? Right. It's out of gas. That's what I thought. <laughs> hey, go show my goldfish. You proud of your goldfish? Yeah, I got names for them. One of them's got white around its mouth. I named it Cotton Mouth. One's name's Gray because it's all gray. Pretty cool. Damn, there's some nice fish, Jerry. <laughs> Thanks. Jerry. Huh? You think we'll have a fish fry? No, I'm not going to use them to eat. Them my buddies. I think this is Big Blue's last day of hauling fat woman. You get that right. <laughs> Jaybird, out. <laughs> He's the weirdest old man I've ever seen. <laughs> Thank you, boys. You did a good job. Uh, Tuesday, I'm getting you some cash. 
For what? To get this over here. I had to pay somebody. You don't owe me nothing. Really? No, you don't owe me nothing. Thank you guys, I appreciate it. All right, guys, so we got our steel. Now we are at our old garage. We're gonna grab our torch and our welder real quick and then head back to town. I might grab that Milwaukee saw. Probably need it. All right, guys, we are back and it's been a productive trip. Anyway, we've got our tools in the trailer. Evidently, we stopped at the scrap yard or the metal yard, whatever you wanna call it. We got some metal to make a radiator support out of. We got our awesome HTP welder, which uh, that thing, i you can't throw a bad weld, it's really amazing. And then we've got our hole maker. Yes, how are you? I've missed you so much. So we're going to go ahead and roll all this stuff into the shop over there and start fabricating up a radiator mount. This should be pretty easy. How hard could it be? There you go. You got it. You want me to grind it? You got it. I got it. All right, you get it. So, uh, what we're doing right now is, what? That's not supposed to be. Anyway, what we're doing right now is this is the yoke nut, or the pinion nut, off of the back of our Ford Mustang. And needless to say, it needed a whittle, very small modification. So we have got the modifier right here, and we've got the modifier 3000 Dominator, and uh, he's gonna modify our nut real quick. I'm going to, I'm going to step back. Burn. That looks like Jesse Jeans himself did that. That looks amazing, Dom. Uh, you might want to wait for that to cool. It's going to be hot. Oh, Dom's a, Dom's a legend. <laughs> Second part strip, we gotta go down to Arc City and grab, I don't know, what all we need? We need some round tubing, a couple more bolts to bolt some stuff together, and some way to mount our radiators to our new cross member we're gonna make. Let's go shopping. Need some of that, need some of that, need some of this. This is so, yes, this is, this is good, Dom. Need all of this, all of this. This guy's awesome, look at that. A and W. What's A and W mean? You really like root beer? No, it's my grandma's initials for her name. Oh, okay. Well, got, now I sound like an asshole. <laughs> my grandparents owned this for thirty some years, and really? just got old enough. And I told them I wanted to buy it. I wanted to do it. So instead of working for somebody else, I'm working for myself. Well, that's the way to do it. Stay in the yeah, way no for it. No Thank problem you. at all. All right, let's get back and get to work on our smoke stain. This is going to be epic. Now, what we need to do is make a radiator support to hold our radiator and our intercooler. That is where this two by four piece of tubing comes in. Now, what we're going to do is we're gonna take, cut off a piece of the metal up there, come out just a little bit, go across the front of the car and tie it back into that strut support there. And then we're gonna grab this angle iron, which we got over at the seal shop and make a cradle for our radiator to sit in. That way it sits there, it's nice, it's pretty, and it does everything it needs to do. And, namely, it keeps our Cummins engine cool. So, cue the epic music and let's fire up the torch. Let's do this. It's ready to go. Danger! Hey, safety squints engaged. The saw did not like that, so we're gonna go ahead and try the whole poker. You know where we're going now. You know what we're gonna use now. Bye. -ya. Woo, I messed that one up. I was getting ready to start tack welding everything together and then I made a discovery. The welder's now plugged in. Now let's flip the switch and turn it on. Yes, a problem. We don't have any power. And 
It's not only that plug-in, it's that plug-in over there doesn't work either. Trust me, we tried. We have no power in here to run our welder. And this isn't one we could run off 110 power either. You mean to tell me I brought this beautiful HTP machine to town for nothing? Anyway, it's like 4 o'clock in the morning, guys. We've worked all day on this car, got a lot of stuff done on it. So I think it's about time we call today, or the next day, and uh, we'll fix this tomorrow. Anyway, if you haven't also hit that subscribe button, make sure you do so. It would make me very happy, and I'm going to go take a nap because I desperately need one, and I don't feel very good. So I'll see you guys next time.